Welcome back to BSG Automotive. Today we have a 2006 Chevy Uplander that needs a left front hub and bearing. So we're gonna walk you through that from start to finish in detail with all the torque specs and socket sizes and all that so you guys know how to do it properly and of course safely. Now what you may notice going back together is there'll be new pads and rotors. This is not necessary for a hub and bearing change in case you uh, uh, are wondering. Uh, this is part of another larger repair on this particular vehicle. Um, the procedure on here is, is pretty simple. You may deal with a little bit of rust issues uh, going along here, but it should come out fairly easily, and I'm going to show you how. Okay, here we go. We have the vehicle safely jacked up and on jack stands, so we can start pulling the hubcap off from the wheel. Uh, what I use is a quarter-inch impact to get these off of here. These are plastic covers to the actual lug nuts. They're not uh, real lug nuts, it's just a cover that holds the wheel um, hubcap on here. So you're supposed to do these by hand, but like I said, I use them, I use the quarter inch to loosen them. This way it doesn't ruin them. Now these only go out a certain distance and they start getting hard again to turn. At that point, they're done. You just need to loosen them a little bit like that. Get this out of here. And then we'll pull the wheel off of here. There's six 19 millimeter lug nuts. If you have an impact, you can do it while it's off the ground. If you don't, you're gonna to need to brake torque on these by either having someone hold the brake in the car and then breaking the torque on them with the half inch breaker bar or doing it before it is taken off the ground. Just breaking torque and then we can finish spinning them off. With an impact, it makes it nice and easy. Get them off from here. lug nuts to the side here by the jack stand so you don't lose anything. Now this may fall right off of here. You may have to hit it a little bit. Let's see this one's stuck a little bit. Before I unstick it, one thing I didn't show you is the way to check for a bald uh, uh, wheel bearing that's going bad. Well, ball joints too, but this also checks the wheel bearing. What you can do is grab from the, uh, the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock position and back and forth, okay? And there should be no movement. This one, it's slight, but it's definitely there. Like I said on the road test, it's just starting to make the noise. So that's a good check. Which can, if it gets stuck, is go like this. And it will break the rust bond on there. We can get the wheel out of here. Now I put a drain pan underneath there so we can uh, catch all the rust and fluids. Uh, makes it a little cleaner. What you want to do, depending on which side you're working on, is turn the wheel so that it's pointing out like this. So you can see that caliper, we can get access to it and pull it off of here. So the way to get this caliper off of here, the easiest way is to simply compress it in a little bit and then we're going to take off the two 15 millimeter bolts on the back side here that bolt the bracket to the knuckle. Then we we'll take the whole thing up here and we're going to hang it out of the way so we can work on just what we're doing. So it looks something like this. C-clamp, or as I use, a wood clamp. And you simply tighten it in a little bit. It'll compress the piston. Okay? And it'll make it that much easier getting off of here. Take those 15 millimeters off back here. Here's a close up of those uh, caliper bracket bolts. You can see where it's attached into right there, the impact. Right there, the ones that bolted to the knuckle, the whole assembly, you can see that one's out up there already. Not these ones. These ones stay in for this repair. 
And then we'll take the whole assembly off like that, use a hook like this, and I'll link to all these parts and tools I'm using uh, down below. You're gonna take that and you're going to use it to hang it onto the strut spring. Okay, now in order to get the rotor off of here, we're gonna have to beat it off of here, of course, but there is a uh, T30 screw that is holding it on there for assembly purposes. We need to take that off of there first. An impact like this is best. And that way it actually comes out without breaking. Uh, these can get pretty corroded in there. So we'll put that to the side of the rest of our bolts and lug nuts. And then we're simply gonna tap right here on the face of the rotor right here where the center of the hub is at right here. That's where the rust bond is at to our hub and bearing we're taking off of here. Now if you're changing the rotor, you can hit it anywhere. Back side, front side, here, doesn't matter. Uh, whereas if you're reusing it, you want to hit it right here. And just go until it's loose like that. Now for this job, we're actually replacing uh, the rotor and pads as a secondary job on this one. Put that to the side. At this point, all we gotta do is take off the axle shaft nut and the ABS clip and three bolts. We start tapping this thing off here, it's that easy. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is clean the threads on here. So we'll clean them with a wire brush the best you can. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, but the less rust and scale on here, the better. And at the same time, you have access to the threads on the back side of the uh, hub here where they stick through it. I'm gonna clean down a little bit and we'll start spraying some rust penetrant here and letting it soak while we're pulling the ABS connector off. Now the best rust penetrant, believe it or not, that I've had experience with is the Mopar rust penetrant. Uh, it's very strong stuff and it's definitely different than anything else uh, out there. So we'll spray the threads, let it soak a little bit and we'll also spray the threads back here in the mating surface. And that's how it looks on here. We got that sprayed, and then we're going to spray the very tip of the bolt that's sticking through there and the surface where it actually mates up to the knuckle on there. All the way around, get a nice soak going. Okay, while that's soaking, let's go ahead and pull off the ABS connector. Now it's right here, okay, by the tie rod end. We're gonna go ahead and pull the clip off of there. And that'll pull the factory harness, there we go, out of the way. Put that down and out of the way so we're not hitting it. That's nice. A bit of fluid coming out of there. And then this, this right here is a short pigtail that comes from the hub and bearing we're changing. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and compress these clips in here and push it through so it can come separate of the... Uh, now the best way to do this is just like this. You see I can press them in and then it'll come right through like that. You can see it's just a V shape like that and it snaps right into there. So you can press them and it'll come right through. Next, let's go ahead and get this uh, axle nut off of here so you can start loosening each one of the three bolts back in here. Okay, one last shot of some rust penetrant for lubricants. Maybe clean the threads a little bit more. And we'll pull this axle nut off here. Now that's a 33 or 34 millimeter, depending on what you have. 34 is a little loose on here, so I imagine it's 33, but 34 will work. Gonna be kind of a pain to take it off of there, um, but just make sure you clean those threads so it doesn't ruin the threads when it backs off of there. At that point, let's clean it real quick and inspect it. It looks good. 
And we're going to do the same thing to our axle and that we're going to clean it up and inspect it. Now the best way I found to separate the axle shaft splines from the hub we're changing is to actually vibrate it in with an air hammer like this. Alternately, you can put the nut back on there flush, tap it, that usually doesn't work too well, or they have hub pullers that bolt to each one of these and it presses it through. We'll see how well this one works. So as you can see, it took a little bit of time, a different tip on there, and I was able to transfer it through, and it pushes through. At that point, you see how easy it moves back and forth? You're free at that point. You can start pulling the bolts off and beating this thing off here. Okay, these on the back side here are 13 millimeter, and you're gonna want to use a breaker bar at first to break torque on them so we can, uh, you know, start loosening them without rounding their heads, which is common when you use an impact tool. So we'll break torque on them. This one's fine. It's coming. Okay. Now for this top one in here, which isn't that far off, it's not too far centered in here, um, it's best to have this fully compressed in the the CV shaft on there. Let's see if I can get access to this one. Perfect. Now what I'm using is a um, a 13 millimeter deep six point, which is very important, and it's a it's a 3 h drive. Changed out to with a half inch drive with the adapter, and you can see it fits perfectly in there. You get this one loosening too. Now luckily these keys are coming right. I mean, you know. Very lucky. These look original, 113,000 or so. And I'm very lucky these are coming out. <coughs> Got the old impact out from the olden days. Let's see if we can fit this in here. Get these out. And there it is. Now the reason why these are coming out is because they have that galvanized coating on them. So yours should come out pretty easy also. So at this point, just go around to your other, the other two, get them out, everything's free, wires disconnected, we can start beating it off of there. Okay, here comes the fun part. All three bolts are out, our ABS wiring is disconnected. Axle nut is off, axle is pushed in. Next thing you gotta do is beat off the hub and bearing assembly together. You just simply tap on the back side of the hub face evenly, both sides, and it should eventually come off of there. Now is the time for safety glasses if they're not on already. Uh, the rust will chip off of there and get right in your eye. Um, so Now what you're gonna wanna use is a three pound sledge like this works perfect uh, for these kinds of situations. Hit it like that, and same thing on this side. And if it's really wedged in there, while you're hitting on the one side, you pull with the other side. And in extreme cases, you're putting uh, a prying device between the hub and a knuckle and pulling while you're hitting the other side. Looks something like this. And this helps it come off of there evenly. You can see it's starting to come off already. This one's not so bad. Now it's already loose, but it's still pressed into the um, axle splines there. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of nudge it through and it'll fall off in our hands. Like so. Now, 
this whole shield may come off with it, probably. Make sure that goes back onto here. Now in this case, which you don't see too often, um, the rest of the hub and bearing, the seal on the back side and the housing actually stayed in there. So we're gonna have to get that part out of there as part of the reluctor ring and stuff like that. And uh, make sure it's fully out of there before we go any further. Now there's a few ways to do this. We're gonna try a couple of them. We basically need to cock the rest of the housing in there so you can pull it out. Um, so we're gonna try it the manual way first with the punch. Like so, and you see how it's cocked in there now? Now it's loose to come out of there. What I really need is a pry bar right now. But there we go. You see, that's the other half of the bearing coming through stuff. Look at that. Um, wow. Never seen the Fords do that, but okay. Yeah, see, that's the whole tone ring assembly and everything. So it didn't take much. Make sure you get it out of there. Now at this point, we're gonna clean the face of this so our new one can sit on there nice and flush. We're gonna clean these two points on there with our same uh, method with the cookie wheel or sandpaper. And then the often uh, forgotten method is to, or the other option is to clean the inside of this here. There's all kinds of corrosion in there. Yeah, let's clean the outside face. I like to get any kind of grease or large debris off there before we fling it everywhere. Something like that. Okay. And we'll start cleaning this up. Now the easiest way I've found to get the inside of this cleaned is with a regular ordinary file like this. You kind of get in there and get the large scale off and that's all you need to do all the way around. Kind of feel for it. And once again, some more brake clean. Brake clean fixes everything. While it's still wet, make sure you wipe it. Look at that, huh? I love that feeling. Restoring vehicles in general. Make them all new again. There we go. Now what I do is I put a little bit of anti-seize on the face here is to avoid the bolt holes. You don't want to put anti-seize on your bolts. Um, there we go. Real light. You don't even have to get close to the bolt holes. Just the fact that most of it has this anti-seize on there to stop corrosion um, helps tremendously with repairs in the future. Just like so. A little bit on the inside here. Again, a thin layer. And it's ready to go back together. Don't forget your shield going back together. We'll clean it up. Uh, if there's any large scale rust on there, clean it off so it doesn't interfere with the mounting. This one's not so bad. A little bit of paint bubbling. Something like that. That's good. And then I'll go back on just like that. Now your new bearing's gonna come like this. This plastic part comes off. That's simply to hold it in place for shipping. So nothing to do with the tone ring gets damaged. You unclip it from there. And this whole part comes off of here. Like so. Now we're going back in. You see the orientation there? That's what you wanna keep. Um, so it goes through 
on the side here. So push the whole thing through, get your wire connector through first. And then you can worry about all the rest right here. Just gotta move it around a little bit, get a spline like it just did. And then we can start um, concentrating and getting these holes lined up. There we go. Now is the time to take each one of these three bolts, inspect them, make sure there's no damage to the threads or, or rust, anything like that. And then we're going to put blue Loctite on them right now and put them to the side. And we can start screwing them into the hub on the back side, hub and bearing, one by one, by hand. And the big point being by hand, because you want them to thread in, you want to feel them threading in before you put anything else on there. So let's get them through the hole in the back side of the knuckle, okay? And then you can start lining them up. Okay, now what I do is I tap it, and I push in on one of the easy to access bolts, and then all of a sudden, as this thing's turning a little bit, it'll just fall right in. And then you start getting it in by hand. We'll get the lower easy one to get in by hand, and the same thing on this side, okay? And then we'll start tightening them with a the ratchet. And what that'll do is we'll do it evenly from side to side, and that'll suck it down nice and flat in the board there, all the way in. And then when we go to do this one up top here, it's a little harder to get aligned. The bearing is right perfectly aligned to the knuckle. And then our final bolt right through here, and it should line up perfectly. It'll be nice and easy to thread in. I do something like this where I use fingers from both sides to get it started. Nice and straight in there. And we can continue with the ratchet. Nice. Okay, now the torque spec on each one of these three bolts is 96 foot pounds. So let's go ahead and torque those down. Okay, let's clean our threads with some brake clean and we'll start getting it ready. Put the nut back on there. The one thing you want to verify is just look at mine. You see how far out the axle is, is protruding? That tells me, and not to mention look, look at the back side, that it's actually splined correctly in there. Um, and it's coming through and it'll be just fine when we're done here. Axle nut, clean it up, make sure the threads aren't damaged, and we'll put plenty of blue Loctite on here. I'd put a little bit on here too, there's a lot of threads. And uh, get used up, get used up quickly. Thread it on by hand. Okay, at this point, we're just gonna tighten this down um, and snug it up before we put the weight of the vehicle on it. And once we get the rotor on here, we can finish torquing it down. Uh, so we'll just snug it down for now. Okay, now this one is getting new brakes. If you're wondering how to do brakes in this vehicle, I have a whole video on that. Uh, separate, from start to finish. But besides that, the rest of the installation for the hub and bearing is reversal of, of removal. The one thing we gotta do is get back here and clip in that ABS connector and the wiring from the body main harness. So let's go ahead and do that. One last thing, make sure your ABS sensor harness is clipped back into that bracket right here for the new hub and bearing. And then we're going to take the factory harness and clip it right into that. That looks something like this. Make sure it goes all the way in. 
Now, like I said, I'm putting this back together with new brake components. That's why it may look different. But when you go to bolt in your brake caliper here and, and caliper assembly, there you go. Um, these 15 millimeter bolts that bolt it back in, uh, the torque spec is 136 foot pounds. And I'll have all these specs down below in the video description also. Okay, everything's back together on here, ready to go. One last thing we gotta do is torque down the axle nut now that all the brake components are back on. Believe it or not, the axle nut torque spec is only 118 foot pounds. The way we're gonna do this is either have someone in the cab pressing the brake, or we're going to do something like this, stick a uh, thick screwdriver into the fins of the rotor, and we're gonna torque it down. And the way this works, is you put it in down here, turn it until it hits the caliper bracket, which is very strong. Steal this from you. And then we're going to simply torque it. Perfect. Don't forget to take your screwdriver out. Give your rotor a quick spin. Okay, it should sound like that. No weird metal noises, just the brake pads dragging on the rotor for a little bit because they're right there. Um, besides that, we can start putting the wheel back onto here. Get the sucker on here. And get these threaded on. A couple threads by hand at first. So there's no chance of cross threading anything. Snug them up, star pattern. And then once it's on the ground, we can torque these down again in a star pattern to 100 foot pounds. Now that is about it. That's all there is to changing one of these hub and bearings. Now remember, we took a lot of part on the front end here, so make sure everything's back in its place. Torque down, wheels torque down to 100 foot pounds, all that good stuff. Get back into the vehicle, start it up, keep it in park. Then we're gonna hit the brake pedal a couple of times until we, we get that nice hard pedal and the pads come back out to the rotor on there. Remember earlier we compressed it, the piston back in, so now it's slack, okay? So do that, then go for a drive, make sure everything sounds good, feels normal, and then we're gonna come back from the test drive and retorque the wheels down to 100 foot-pounds. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's gonna be many more, more like this in the future. All makes and models on this channel, and I'll see you then.